Hi, it's Thursday, and it's time again for Bible study, amen? And as usual, the purpose of her Bible study is to encourage the people of God with the Word of God, amen? Please share this with your friends and family. We are in the series of how God speaks to us, His children, and His methods that He uses. We started on the first Thursday of May this month, right? And we did with uh, looking at Genesis, with hearing God through dreams. Then uh, last week, we looked at hearing God through symbolic actions. Come on, somebody. That was so powerful. And this week is going to be just as powerful because now we're looking at hearing God. And our topic now today is the voices of God. Oh, child, it's good. I am excited about today's class, and I'm sure you are too. Please, please, please share this with your friends and family. Send it to them via Messenger or send it to them via Facebook, whatever you do. But let everybody have a chance to hear this series that we're now doing. This is the third part of the voices of and hearing God. Amen. And as usual, uh, we study from the New Living Translation. Amen. Okay. So I'm starting with 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1 to 18. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1 to 18. Again, to our topic today is the voices of God. When Ahab got home, he told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, including the way he had killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. Listen, children of God. This is a woman intimidated a man, not only a man, but a prophet of God, amen, who just killed all her false prophets and ma uh, magicians that she had in her in her in her kingdom. But anyway, let's move on. She said, I'm going to read verse 2 again. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. May the gods strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you killed them. Okay, verse 3. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. Then he went on alone into the wilderness. Traveling all day, he sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors who have already died. Mind you, he fought the battle against all those other false prophets, right? And he, in a moment now of weakness and depression, because he was threatened by Jezebel, he's telling God, take my life for I'm no better than my ancestors who have already died. Shake my head. Verse 5. Then he laid down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones and on a jar of water. So he ate and drank and laid down again. So he was awakened by an angel. And told to get up and eat. Who sent the angel? God did. Verse 7. Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, Get up and eat some more, or the journey ahead will be too much for you. Saints of God, I want you to hear me clearly. Sometimes we go through some things and it wears us down. And we think we cannot make it. We can't do nothing else. We can't go another step. God knows that. He understands how frail we are. He knows our makeup. Nothing in us that happens to us or around us is unknown to God. He knows everything. So you can do just like Elijah. Lay down 
and know that God's already working out the problem for you. So the angel says, get up and eat some more or the journey ahead will be too much for you. Verse 8. So he got up and ate and drank and the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai. Can you just imagine? 40 days and 40 nights on that meal. There he came to a cave where he spent the night. But the Lord said to him, now this is a direct conversation. What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left and now they are trying to kill me too. Verse 11. Go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Oh, come on, somebody. And after the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied again, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. Verse 15. Oh, this is so good. Then the Lord told him, go back the same way you came and travel to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive there, anoint Azael to be king of Aram. Then anoint Jehu, grandson of Nishi, to be king of Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Safat, from the town of abel Meloah to replace you as my prophet. Anyone who escapes from Aziel will be killed by Jehu, and those who escape from Jehu will be killed by Elisha. Yet, I will, I will preserve, oh come on somebody, I will preserve 7,000 others in Israel who have never bowed down to Baal or kissed him. When God was asking Elijah saints where he was, it wasn't so much his physical location. It was where he was mentally and in his spirit. He was depressed. He was out of alignment with God and out of sync with God. Where are you right now, children of God? Recognize that God is all everywhere at all times. He can see everything as it happens. So nothing is an accident with God. Amen. So don't worry when you can see others. God is still your focal point. If God is asking right now, where are you? What is your answer to him? Are you in alignment with God? Are you looking this way? Oh, come on, somebody. Who is that for? Get back in sync with your creator. Amen. Psalms 29, 3 to 9 says, the voice of the Lord echoes above the sea. The God of glory thunders. 
The Lord thunders over the mighty sea. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord splits the mighty cedars. The Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon's mountains skip like a calf. He makes mountain Hermon leap like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with bolts of lightning. The voice of the Lord makes the barren wilderness quake. The Lord Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists mighty oaks and strips of forge the forest bare. In his temple, everyone shouts glory. Oh, come on, somebody. Let us shout glory. Because the voice of the Lord is what we're listening for. The voice of the Lord is what we know we have inside. Amen, somebody. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9 says, I watched as thrones were put in place and the ancient one sat down to judge. His clothing was as white as snow, his hair like purest wool. He sat on a fiery throne with wheels of blazing fire. Oh, come on somebody. That's our daddy he's talking about. Creator of the universe, the one who loves us, the one who called us from darkness into his marvelous light, the one who says we are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Come on, somebody. Oh, Jesus. Isaiah 4 and 5 says, then the Lord will provide shade for Mountain Zion and all who assembly there. He will provide a canopy of cloud during the day and smoke and flame and fire at night, covering the glorious land. Amen. Know who you are, somebody. Job 38, 49 says, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? This is God talking to Job when Job stood his ground with his three friends. Remember them? And they told him this and told him that. And Job was like, look, I know I got this thing. I know I didn't do nothing wrong. And Job was certainly having conversation with God because he couldn't figure what was going on. Job 38, 49 says, where were you? This is God speaking to Job out of the whirlwind. He says, where were you when I lay the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. Who determines its dimensions and stretches out the surveying lines? Lord, he says, what supports its foundations? And who laid its cornerstones? Three snaps in a circle, somebody. Listen, when God when God decides to read you, as we say on the streets, or when he decides to fix you and pull you up into a, 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 a knot and let you know, look, I got this. Where were you when I was gathering all of this stuff? Okay. He says, as the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Verse 8 says, who kept the sea inside its boundaries as it burst from the womb. And as I clothed it with clouds and wrapped it in thick darkness. That's daddy talking directly to one of his children. Listen, children of God. How does God speak to you? I want you to inbox me. I want to hear how you are hearing from the Lord. Remember a situation in your life when you know it was God who came to your rescue and spoke to you directly. I want to hear from you all as we go through the month of May. As we go through this month, I want to hear as to how God speaks to you. Inbox me, please. Amen. And make sure to share this with somebody because God is so awesome. He's too big for us to understand. Amen. Listen, it's all that. He's all that in a bag of chips. Amen. With that, we're going to go to our, our prayer list. Lydia, Ayana, Emmett, Starlight, Giovanni. I want Shaka for family, Corey, Jordan, Cassandra, Graves, Georgette, Norma Reed, Anthony Walker, Julian Walker and family, Elijah, Echo, Don Cosby, Lee McGee, Marie Rice, Patrick Linton, Deacon Isabel Roberts. We get two James. We got Harry's family, Lorraine Rogers. We've got 
Mario French, Romario French, Pastor T, Leonie Walker, Tracy Sisko, Lee Mullins, Marlene Franklin, Brown, Donna, Jean Goldsby, Wright family, Karen and Charles, Elvis and Yvonne, Michael, Denise, Malcolm Bell, Ed Hogan, Harry Duran, Keith Thomas, Abadias, JD, TJ, James Rock, Nigeria, Israel, Kenya, Ethiopia, South Africa, Puerto Rico. We're always, always praying for Howard Holman, Reverend Wendell, J. Mapson, Jeffrey Brown, Donald Rigby, and Gary Fouch. We're praying for United States of America. We're praying for Ukraine and Russia. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the matchless name of Jesus, we come to you right now, God, giving you the praise you so rightly deserve. We thank you for your love for us and for your grace and your mercy. We ask now, God, as we lay everything at your feet, everybody at your feet, we thank you for your awesomeness, God. As we see in the word of you, even spoke to Job through that whirlwind and you clarified to him that you got this, everything. You tell the waters where to come, how far and how far not to come. You tell the stars when to come out at night and where to go when it's daylight. Lord God, you are incredible. We thank you for loving us, Lord God. We thank you for the alignment that we have with you in our relationship with you. We ask, no God, as we go through the rest of this week that you will go with us, bless everything we do, bless our families, and let us meet back here next Thursday for the conclusion of of the voices and the communications of God. We love you, Father, and we praise you. It's in Jesus' holy and matchless name we pray. And we say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, children of God. I love you. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And see you next Thursday. Bye-bye.